Uh, King K. Rule, the historic nemesis of Donkey Kong, is now announced for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Isn't it interesting how Nintendo repeatedly takes enemies and puts them in much friendlier situations with their rivals? Golfing, tennis, karting, and even combat, albeit on much friendlier terms. What is the motivation for these enemies' changes of heart? The bigger question is, since these foes are obviously capable of situational friendship, what is the motivation for their villainy in the first place? Just as we cannot judge a book by its cover, let us subvert our preconceptions of villainy. I'd imagine that the story might go something like this. Crocodile Island, home to a civilization in ascendance. Enriched by the plentiful oil throughout its vistas, the Kremlin nation has become dominant. Technology, culture, tourism, who can speak of anything that Crocodile Island lacks? But in its bounty, the Kremlings have created an unsustainable society. Government officials distract the population from learning about low oil reserves that will threaten their very way of life through bread and circuses. Investment in the crazy Kremlin. But there is a plan. An intrepid commander is set on a secret mission for bioethanol. And what is the source that will save Crocodile Island? The plentiful bananas of nearby Donkey Kong Island. The invasion, enshrined in history as the Great Ape War, initially overwhelmed the natives, allowing K. Rule and his forces to make inroads into the island nation. But the war was not a total victory. Although the Croc army established its oil factories on the island, they were not able to secure the supply chain of the vital feedstock, the bananas. The Great Ape War, now public to the Kremlin people at home, scandalized the government. To avoid a monarchical crisis, K. Rule announced a new campaign, Glory, Fuel, and K. Rule. With new military tactics, he attacked Donkey Kong Island again, seizing the supply chains of bananas and securing an alliance with local tribes to reinforce his rule. But again, the people of Donkey Kong Island were not complacent. Though their forces were diminished, they had the advantage of understanding the terrain and a mastery of guerrilla tactics. And so they fought back to secure the banana horde and chase K. Rule off the island. Embarrassed again and disgraced from government, K. Rule descended into an obsessive madness, attempting revenge several times against the people of Donkey Kong Island. A botched political kidnapping of the ape champion Donkey Kong would lead to a catastrophic reversal of fortune for the Kremlin nation. The apes learned the secret of Crocodile Island. It was built around volatile rock formations and weakened by the overextraction of oil. By tricking the insane K. Rule into disturbing the core of Crocodile Island, the madman inadvertently destroyed his homeland, reducing the Kremlin nation from a technological power at the forefront of the world to a nation of refugees. The Kremlings relocated and, in the face of repeated embarrassment, developed an evolved society with a constitutional monarchy. It relinquished all claims to Donkey Kong Island and, as the former colonial power of that island, joined in partnership to help both nations restructure. And so, decades of conflict became a civilized peace. Or so it would appear from this story's cover. As the nations of the world, many of whom have experienced the same history of colonialism, such as the Mushroom Monarchy versus the Koopa Confederacy, the civil wars of Hyrule, and so on, have moved beyond historic struggles, old pains have not disappeared completely. And so, a new effort to peaceably resolve disagreements has begun, the Super Smash Brothers Tournament. Will it secure peace for a fractured world? Or are some traumas from a culture's history irredeemable? Subversive asset here. So glad that you joined me for this journey. This is something that I've always wanted to experiment with, integrating the stories more fully with the cover. If you want the music without me talking over it, my Patreon subscribers will get early access to the music only cover story. And this cover will be licensed for distribution, so you should see it on Spotify, iTunes, etc. 
pretty soon. I'll add the links in the description when those are available.